let me introduce uh, the commander of the army. Uh, Lieutenant General Darat Naik is the 20th commander of the Sri Lanka Army, having assumed office on 1st August 2013. That's why he's a direct commander. Uh, he's been uh, in command for a few weeks, but nevertheless, it is long career in the army. Uh, I'm sure he will uh, tell us a lot of things. Excelling discharging his duties in both Sri Lanka Light like Infantry Regiment and Military Intelligence Corps, and took part in all the major offensive operations against terrorism since 1981, and even sustained battle injuries. He has followed and attended many local and overseas courses, seminars, and visits representing the country. Currently, he is reading for his doctorate at the Kotalabra Defense University. So you have a student here of the university itself uh, giving us his perspectives. Uh, very interesting and anyway, all the very best to you in your PhD studies. He has also held many command appointments in public rank and was privileged to command an infantry battalion. Moreover, three infantry brigades were commanded prior to becoming the general officer commanding of the 23rd Division during the humanitarian operations consolidated uh, in the Eastern Province. Later, he was appointed as Commissioner General of Rehabilitation to rehabilitate 12,000 ex LTT combatants. In addition, Lieutenant General Dharat Naik also has held many key staff, instructor, and administrative appointments. In addition to being Commanding Officer of the Sri Lanka Military Academy, Director Media of the Sri Lanka Army, and the Military Spokesman for the Ministry of Defense. His performances in many daunting operations to establish sovereignty of the country have been well recognized with more than 20 gallantry and service medals. Today, he is presenting his paper on the role of military in the context of Sri Lanka as a hub in Asia. Over to you, General of Naya. Thank you, Sir Honorable Chair, Secretary of Defense, and ladies and gentlemen. A topic uh, you will see on the screen. Role of uh, military on our way of way to becoming the world wonder of Asia is a very broad topic which needs long hours to discuss. However, what I am going to present today goes beyond the traditional role of military forces. Many scholars in forum of this nature would make elaborate explanations uh, on the tasks of military forces in the contemporary world, but may not explain the conceptual framework in which military forces should act. What I, am, what I feel is that the absence of a conceptual framework will not allow proper execution of the tasks. So with that I will present my paper, the present, aim of my presentation is to conceptualize the role of military in developing Sri Lanka as a hub in Asia. So many speakers before me explain the strategic importance, location, everything uh, of our country and I look at it from those, it is located in the center of uh, Indian Ocean and the world. Here it, she, the Sri Lanka shines like a pendant of a necklace on the international sea routes and among the nations. So therefore, the influence of powerful nations on Sri Lanka is constant, which has been the case throughout. And my Chinese friend, and he was one of our instructors, and command, our defense, the chief of defense staff and mine, he is still uh, an instructor there. So he, they were talking about this, uh, uh, strategic theories, uh, military theories in the world say whoever controls the choke points controls the world. The, so I don't have to elaborate and he explained it and there's another saying that whoever who controls Asia controls the world. And one more I would like to say whoever who controls the rim of nations starting from United Kingdom going through India and through China to uh, you know, South Korea. So this, this rim of nation, whoever who controls it, controls the world. So with 
these strategic factors and other geopolitical and economic reasons, Sri Lanka was not spared by the powerful nations. South Indians, according to uh, Professor Rohan Gundras's last revolution, he says 17 times South Indians invaded Sri Lanka. So thereafter, followed by Portuguese, the Dutch, and the Britishers invaded Sri Lanka, and their domination was for almost 500 years, or 450 years, to be exact. So out of them, the British were the most successful in governing the entire country for nearly 130 years. So they didn't just uh, wait for 130 years. They basically, in order to sustain their influence the, and to fulfill their needs of the colonial masters, they conceptualize, they institutionalize, they uh, socialize, culturalize, and moreover, educationalize the time-tested Sri Lankan or the age-old governing mechanism with theirs. So with that background, Sri Lanka couldn't overcome this uh, during the time of independence. We could not, democ uh, democracy also, we could not uh, 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 introduced to Sri Lanka with Sri Lankan characteristics. As a result of all that, we uh, had to go through all this. Though we got independence, we were left with those remnants of colonialism. As a result of this, we ended up trying to resolve prolonged conflict for almost three decades, as we all know. Finally, with the leadership of His Excellency the President and the brilliance of our Secretary of Defense, we were able to strengthen the military capability by reinforcing it using all elements of national power and deliver it at the right place, in right quantity, in right quality, in right time, and in right form. This is how we overcome the problem that we face. So finally, the final results, we all know the, uh, we created world record by defeating terrorism. However, what we achieved on 18th May 2009 is a physical elimination of the threat. The psychological elimination is yet to be completed. So if you look at this slide, you see the armed forces, they physically eliminate, uh, eliminated the terrorism and the psychological elimination is a bigger task. There are no shortcuts if all these speakers were talking. So as a result, the government very rightly understand in this and introduce a goal. They said Sri Lanka's goal is to become the wonder of Asia. So now those elements supported, uh, which supported the military to overcome that military uh, problem, militarily, they now have to take the leadership and take Sri Lanka uh, towards uh, achieving the goal set by the government. So th this is what we say the uh, future vision of Sri Lanka. So if you look at uh, this way forward from another uh, angle, the national goal, achieving that, and we set the national goal, thereafter you government develop a balanced development plan which uh, include uh, political, social, economic factors and basically we call it from the military terms the conceptual component and then you have to convince the people so get the society involved in this we call it once again in military terms the moral component or social mobilization so society has to be mobilized so uh, then the uh, military in the process of neutralizing neutralization we call the physical one we achieved and the uh, psychological one in the process of achieving or completing. So when we open these new windows to the world, the, uh, it becomes an opportunity. At the same time, those windows will open for other challenges to come into the country as well. So here, these challenges, when we are transforming uh, a society in a rapid rate, it, these effects affect the individual, then the in internally it affects, and also externally it affects. The, this could be seen from another dimension. We call it uh, the domestic uh, dimension. 
in the regional dimension and also international dimensions into this as well. So if you once again look at from a conflict resolution the, uh, side, the, we, we, there are a thing called conflict trap. So this could be one of those as well. So if you don't understand all this, overcoming this become uh, difficult. So when the transformation with uh, a short period of time, transformation is uh, aspects of political, social, economic, cultural, and all other aspects, and the people find it difficult to cope up with, the, this, with this transformation. As a result, always a disorder takes place uh, in a country when during post-conflict uh, period. So this is disorder is basically exploited by interested elements, parties, local and uh, overseas. So therefore, the role of armed forces is to maintain a secure environment while assisting other elements of national power to take the lead during the transformation, this transformation to the uh, prevent, uh, prevent disorder. Here, uh, Mr. Kofi Annan, as the Secretary of Defense, uh, sorry, Secretary of the United Nations, he once said, I quote, the conflict trap reflects the fact that once countries have experienced a conflict, they double the chances of having another conflict within five to ten years period, unquote. So this is a very uh, appropriate, very good uh, uh, saying by uh, Mr. Kofi Annan. He says all this with the uh, Western thinking in him. So the Western concept is to address the issues when they surface or its outcome. So, but here our concept is quite different. This is what most of the people can't understand. The Sri Lankan concept is to address the core issue in order to establish sustainable peace. So this is the fundamental difference here. This is why Mr. Rohan or someone said the Iraqi problem is still the Americans are struggling, though they declared the problem was over, but still problem aggravated and they are still in that mess. Or Afghanistan also the same. So this is why after 19th of uh, May 2009, you know what happened in Sri Lanka. Not a single bullet being fired uh, in Sri Lanka. No case of terrorism, uh, act terrorist activity being reported here. So finally, I would like to put all what I said in a, a slide and say how uh, the military get involved and the uh, involvement of uh, armed forces in uh, when the country is being developed uh, during a post-conflict uh, era. So first thing, when we had the uh, high intensity conflict, the military were the flag bearers and they took the leadership and they physically eliminated the threat and they brought uh, peace. So thereafter, once that is achieved, so the social element of the society take the leadership thereafter, and they carry out the, give the social support to the society, resettlement, uh, reuniting the families, then rehabilitation, providing shelter, the food, and those basic needs required to the people being provided during the social uh, phase. And you achieve somewhat social stability. So if you look at from the Maslow's theory, you achieve the physiological needs, fulfill the physiological needs of the people. Then the next phase comes the economic element take the leadership. And they develop the infrastructure and basically give the livelihood to the people. Then, uh, so once you achieve uh, economic stability, you fulfill the social and security needs of the people. Thereafter, only the political uh, element take the leadership. At this stage, the military, uh, now you will see, at the first stage, it was military taking the leadership. Thereafter, they keep on deviating from the social involvement, coming out of it, and then the security level also, from high intensity level, it comes down to low intensity level. And third phase, it comes to a law and order situation where the police is taking the leadership, military is getting away from 
those day-to-day uh, -day, uh, uh, involvements. So their involvement becoming smaller and smaller. They keep on reducing. So once we achieve the political stability, then the self-esteem need of the uh, people being fulfilled. So as I told initially, there are no shortcuts to it. You have to achieve social stability, economic stability, and the political stability to achieve sustainable peace. So once you achieve sustainable peace, your self-actualization need of the people is fulfilled. This is the place where this, uh, the military get into barrack. Now thereafter you will see the military only in ceremonial uniforms or in forums of uh, this nature. So it is not the soldiers. I have seen there are uh, university uh, academics here. And most of the university strikes uh, slogans I have seen, get the military out of this. Don't militarize our uh, universities and so on. It is not militarization. It is not the soldier's responsibility of getting into barrack. It is a responsibility of the uh, larger society to get the soldier into barrack. Because soldier in overcoming the uh, serious problem that we were going through for the last three decades, we work beyond, very much beyond the normal call of duty and we achieved it. In order to, for the nation to achieve its goal, her goal, the, everybody in the society, all segments of the society must work beyond the normal call of duty and achieve that. So everybody in the society must work beyond the call of duty. Then only the soldier will automatically get into barracks. You will see uh, the soldier in ceremonial uniforms. So once you fulfill that, you achieve the final objective of wonder of Asia or whatever the goal set by the government. You have now sustainable peace. You have stable political situation. You have stability in economic. You have stability in social aspects. Thereby, you have uh, the sustainable peace. This is how the military involvement and the, uh, in a post conflict era, the countries work. Finally, con in conclusion, I would like to say Sri Lanka has always proceeded with these activities by adhering to full democratic means. That is, throughout the conflict and thereafter, it has been the civilian elected government which controlled, managed, implemented, and monitored all measures in reaching the national goal. Thank you very much, sir.